Hey, Yokai! What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite animes, and today I'm going to do a review on Attack on Titan or Shingeki no Kyojin Season 3B. There's water on my script. Frick. The latest season. That's right, I have finally caught up with the anime. If you haven't seen seasons 1 to 3A, please leave because this review is going to be one gigantic spoiler and I also don't want to spend another 12 years recapping Attack on Titan so you know what I'll just reiterate what I said in my last review. Basically Eren, Mikasa, and Armin are victims of a very tragic incident that happened in their hometown where for the first time in 100 years Titans broke the walls and killed a lot of people. They wanted to fight back so they joined the Survey Corps which is a team of soldiers that's responsible for fighting Titans. But people always discriminate against them because usually it's the people who suck who joins the Survey Corps because they're going to die anyways. We also have characters like Jean, the asshole turned good guy, Sasha, the food loving country girl, Connie whose family became the victims of a beast Titan, Krista or Historia who are secretly revealed to be uh, in the royal family who was tossed away due to political reasons but she's actually the, uh, the rightful heir to the throne. Uh, Reiner and Berthold who are revealed to be secretly the two titans that which destroyed Eren's hometown, the armored titan and the colossal titan respectively. And then we have Ymir who's a human titan fusion as well and has a tragic backstory and is it and she is at least 80 years old or something but looks like she's 20 maybe and then we have annie who's this really emotionless girl turns out to be a really smart and powerful female titan who sealed herself in a block of crystal after being defeated by Eren, and she never showed up in season two or in this season actually and of course Eren himself turned out to be a titan as well we also get commander levi who's this really chill but smart and talented super strong and powerful guy, Commander Erwin, who's a really good and dedicated person, and Hanji, who's super fascinated and titans, also a really uh, talented person. Uh, anyways, in season 3A, they overthrew the government, fought Rod Rice, the disgusting gigantic titan, and coronated Historia as the queen of the whole country. Now the Survey Corps are on a mission to retake Wall Maria. First of all, let's talk about the OP. I don't want to say this, but this is unfortunately probably my least favorite OP in the entire anime so far. It's basically one big mash of all the previous OPs. It's messy, it's not that catchy, it doesn't have the intense energy, and the animation for the OP is so-so. But holy shit, the season itself is absolutely amazing and without a doubt the best season so far. The first episode is the town where everything began, referring to Shiganshina, which is Eren, Mikasa, and Armin's hometown, in a mission to find the hole in Shiganshina walls and patch it up to retake Wall Maria because humans in that country, they have three rings of walls and they lost the first ring when there's a hole in Shiganshina, which means the titans can go through the hole and take the whole area anyways the survey corps had arrived the town which is uh again Aaron's hometown they have arrived and everything seemed totally fine but some something was wrong something was wrong and and armin and erwin they they can feel it turns out their enemies are preparing for an ambush attack and after Eren transformed and hardened and plugged the first hole between the outside and shiganshina that's when reiner popped up out of nowhere within the walls and transformed into the armored titan. And with the first three episodes, I realized that this isn't just humans fighting for survival, but this is straight up a complicated strategic battle because both sides have their plans and both sides have their struggles. And that just makes the plot so much more captivating and interesting. Also, it's been a while since Reiner and Bertolt did something, so of course I was, I was satisfied. Episode two is Thunder Spears, and this entire episode is dedicated to the fight between Reiner Reiner's armor titan and the survey corps. Eren was instructed to, to distract Reiner from killing the horses because the horses are crucial because people need to travel and escape on horses. Reiner took the bait and had a fight with Eren. Meanwhile, the rest the, the rest of survey corps has these thunder spears, which are basically like grenades, but also spears. So you can javelin the thing into Reiner and blow it up, which can counter Reiner's armor. And those scenes are really epic. And seeing them take down Reiner was both satisfying and heartbreaking. Cause again, Reiner, deep down, deep down in Reiner, He's not a bad guy, he's actually a good person, just 
following the, the chain of command and trying to uh, fulfill his duties. Uh, also, goddamn, Erwin's ice-cold stare at Reiner is just legendary, and Erwin's flashbacks showing his regrets and flaws are also really impactful and memorable. Episode 3, Descent, is also a super-duper entertaining episode. We are moving over to the second stage of the enemy's plan, where the Beast Titan throws Bertolt into Shiganshina from within the walls and Bertolt is of course the gigantic colossal titan and at one point Armin wanted to negotiate with Bertolt but for some reason Bertolt was so determined to wipe out humanity not for personal reasons but more like it's his duty and seeing Mikasa trying to kill Bertolt was insane the adrenaline levels are friggin high we also see the flashbacks of Annie and the humane side of her, which is definitely gratifying, and seeing that Berthold is trying to be independent and strong is also good character development in parallel with Armin's development. Armin always thought he's weak, but when Erwin told everyone to listen to Armin, Armin had to man up and lead the people. And we also see the Beast Titan in his human form finally. Apparently he's not some insane evil man. He's just a determined man who wants to fulfill his duties as well. And I just really, really love that. And I guess I just really want to know where is Emiya right now. Where is she? Then we have episodes 4 to 6. Holy fucking shit. Oh my god. You have to be joking. These three episodes might be the best three episodes in anime I have ever seen. It's really difficult for me to think of another episode that I've seen that's even better or at least on par with these three episodes. I mean, I guess maybe the Bites the Dust episodes in JoJo Part 4. Even so, the level of Im emotional impact is just unprecedented in these three episodes. It's actually insane. Episode 4 is perfect game and Isaya Mahajime really took the entire plot to the rock bottom where everyone dies and it seems like the entirety of the Survey Corps are defeated. On one side we have Reiner the armored titan who is alive and is healing and then Berthold the colossal titan who blew everyone up and set everything on fire and is about to break the walls and kill everyone on the other side. On the other side we have the beast titan throwing rocks and they are as powerful as cannons and waves upon waves of people are killed because of it. It was showering blood. It was showering gore. It's the ugliest parade of screams and deaths. It's fucking disgusting. And then there's episode 5 hero where in these extreme conditions when not many people have survived extreme measures are taken and when I say extreme I say extreme holy shit the things people do in this episode oh my god people sacrificing themselves and it pushes me to tears it's so powerful yet so cruel why did these good people have to go so far for the sake of humanity it's honestly humbling and powerful Episode 6, Midnight Sun, is not as action-packed, and it's still one of the best episodes in the entire anime ever. Isaya Mahajime is a friggin' genius for writing this bit, when the entire team had only one syringe and can turn someone into a titan and save that person, because titan has healing powers, the person with the syringe had a dilemma. Who to save, and who to be left for dead. The dilemma is what makes this episode so riveting, so intense, so polarizing, and I'm giving a spoiler alert. Goddamn. If you haven't seen part 3B, skip description. So on episode 5, Erwin gave a really, really great speech on how they are going, all going to die anyway. So instead of trying to cover from the Beast Titan's rocks, they kamikazed and rushed the Beast Titan as a distraction. So that Levi, one person, one person, can sneak up to the Beast Titan and kill him. And at the at the end, the plan kind of worked, but the Beast Titan guy survived and escaped anyways. It's all in vain. Are you fucking kidding me? A hundred, two hundred, three hundred people died, and it's all in vain. Wow. Marlo died, Erwin was dying, and the Beast Titan survived. That is frustrating. Uh, then Sasha, Connie, and Mikasa tried to fight Reiner, and Reiner sort of had an amnesia and got defeated easily, but the suspenseful bit is that them three are running out of gas and are wounded, and Reiner's hella tough, and turns out Hanji's alive, thank god. The most powerful moment is Armin sacrificing himself by letting Berthold burn him alive and scorch him into a piece of coal while Eren leaves his titan form and attack from behind. It worked. 
but oh my god, Armin just earned so much of my respect and that's so fucking brutal. Being roasted slowly for the sake of humanity? Oh my god. Episode 6 is where Levi had the syringe and had to choose between saving Erwin or saving Armin. They're both on the verge of dying. This one is so brutal and emotional. They argue over which one to save. Levi tried to name every good thing Erwin had done to humanity, and then Mikasa and Eren tried to name every good thing Armin had done to humanity. And of course, Erwin is the more important one. They have to let Armin die. But no, Levi saved Armin at the end. And Erwin died, which fucking sucks. His dream is to see the basement. He endured all this shit. An arm being eaten, framed for murder, locked up, suicidal charging, and then died without even achieving the dream. Which is really depressing, honestly. The world is a cruel place. I guess if I was Levi, I would try to maybe give Erwin half the syringe and Armin half the syringe. Um, but actually, I, I did a little research and apparently, once you turn into a titan, you become a pure titan. You can't become a human again unless you eat a titan shifter. And there's only one Titan shifter they captured, Bertolt, because Reiner escaped. So they can't share Bertolt, but actually, can they though? I mean, spinal fluid, I mean, a, a person has a lot of spinal fluid. Can, can you share the syringe and then share Bertolt? I know it doesn't seem really realistic, but you can kind of do that, right? Anyways, uh, yeah, also, also, I kind of... I want to know what Armin's colossal titan would look like. You know, given that Armin's a bit of a bit of a softy, you know, he's a, he's a good person. So his colossal titan would be like a like a gentle giant, which is really cool. But uh, yeah, Erwin died. Armin lived and ate Bertolt, and I'm sad because a I want to see Bertolt being tortured alive slowly for doing such a terrible thing to Armin. B Berthold is actually a good guy and, and very, very inside, and he doesn't deserve this. Such conflicting emotions. Such powerful story. Then we have the last four episodes, which are definitely slower and not as eventful as the first six, but still very fruitful, as a shit ton of questions are being answered in these four episodes. Episode 7 is The Basement, and obviously it's about... The basement. This is what happens after the battle of Shiganshina, and then Hanji, Levi, Eren, and Mikasa entering the basement and finding out the three books that Eren's dad, Grisha, had written. One book about the world outside, one book about the Titans, and one book basically about his autobiography. It's a rather slow episode, but a cool down is very much needed, and I like that. And then in episode 8, that day, it's an episode entirely dedicated to flashbacks about Eren's dad, Grisha. Apparently, the world of Attack on Titan takes place on an island called the Paradise Island. And on the island are the people being exiled and have three ringed walls. On the main continent, we originally have Eldia, and its founder is a Titan. The founder Titan? Then the Marley Empire took over and tried to discriminate against the remaining Eldians, which reminds me a little, little, little bit of a Nazi Germany. Or uh, if they fight back death by exile, by turning them into pure titans and ditching them on Paradise Island. And when Eren's dad was in his teen years, it's uh, basically the equivalent of maybe sometime after the Industrial Revolution happened in Germany. Early... 1900s maybe and Grisha one day had learned how cruel the government was and the fact that Eldians did nothing wrong the founder Titan was actually a really good Titan so he wanted to fight back and that didn't go so well and then he met a stranger who actually inherited one of the nine historical Titans the founder Titan is called Emir and he or she somehow made nine other powerful Titans with their own power so overall Great flashback episode, very interesting. The other the other side of the wall in this anime actually kind of reminds me of the other side of the gate in Full Metal Alchemist, but eh, I should shut up. I can't I can't spoil other animes in my anime reviews. Then we have episode 9, the Attack Titan, and we are back in the present day where they return to the capital. They decided if they should publish the truth or not, and luckily, because they wanted to oppose the idea of being a deceptive, corrupted government, they actually published it. And the episode constantly jumps back and forth from Grisha's flashbacks to the present day, and it wasn't until right at the very, very, very end of the episode when we have a subtle but absolutely bonkers revelation. Holy shit, how did that happen? Why? When? Anyways, the last episode is episode 10, The Other Side of the Walls, where it takes place like 7 months after the events of episode 9. Here's my logic. 
In this episode, it says that it's been six years since Bertolt's colossal and Reiner's armored broke into Shiganshina and a year after the attack on Trust, which makes sense because they spent five years in the training camp. And then for the next five months, it is the events of the second half of season one all the way to the previous episode, so now we are seven months into the future. And we also got a quick glimpse of Historia getting Emir's memories, which was already explained in the middle of season two. Eren also learned another piece of memory by touching Historia, and at the end, they rode their horses to the beach and had reached the sea for the first time, and the whole scene was very quiet but had an emotional impact. Overall, Attack on Titan 3B is the best season of the anime so far, by miles. The first six episodes are completely action-packed, watertight, heartbreaking, earth-shattering, mind-blowing, devastating, cataclysmic, intense battles. The last four are more informational, but still have an emotional impact to them, and I'm beginning to love the lore of the story because there's just so much. The voice acting, I can't stretch this enough, but damn, the voice acting is really great. Everyone did a fantastic job. I can't find one single voice actor who did their character averagely because everyone did so great and Ono Daisuke kills it as Erwin. I'm gonna respond to his shouts 50 miles away if like, if Ono Daisuke yells like, like, Star Platinum or, or something like, a, Shinzo wo Sasage yo, like 50 meters away, I'm gonna be like, yeah, yeah, I dedicate my heart, you know. <laughs> I really don't have that many complaints to this season. I guess I still want to see uh, more of Annie or Emir in action. They just disappeared completely. Aside from that, I really love the vibe of this season as well. The world is so much crueler. The violence is more graphic and brutal. And the world building is grandiose in a sad, poetic sense. Isayo Mahajime really improved upon the story. And I bet he didn't even think this far into the history and politics and magic when he first wrote the story but but maybe he already had that in mind i really don't know if, if he did then he, he's truly a genius my favorite episode is hero probably my favorite anime episode i've ever watched and my least favorite is the basement even though it's still good i'm saying attack on titan or shingeki no kyojin season 3b is mind blowing and i'm giving it a decent 9 out of 10 i'm actually late uh, to the haircut. Hey, I have a haircut. I had a haircut. Uh, also, I forgot to mention um, since season 3b is a 9 out of 10 and season 3a is an 8 out of 10 together, they would average out to a light 9. So that will be the overall score for season 3. So, have you seen Attack on Titan Season 3B? From 1 to 10, how much did you read it? Like, if you like it, and subscribe if you want more. Thanks for watching. Season 4 hype. Also, I will be watching Konosuba and Jojo Part 5 for my next animes, but before that I will review Dark.